back to another episode of the A50T5R all-wheel drive build. Chugging along, making some progress. Haven't really been going during the weeks. Um, just been tired of working on the car, you know, but on the weekends, I always go on the weekends unless I'm going away. But we're just gonna be doing some quick things. We're gonna be spacing out the uh, prop shaft. We're gonna be spacing out some of the, the, the exhaust, using some tabs to solid mount it, and adjusting some of the V-bands and just fixing up a bunch of little small stuff and um, then we can get to driving this thing a bit more and hopefully get out a video on the PCV modifications that I do and also uh, putting together a new cop harness because I'm having an issue with some of the soldered connections breaking after five or six years. So we need to go back, redo that entire harness and make sure we crimp anything. Enough of me talking, let's get into it. Brought the old welder over to the car. I'm making some like exhaust tabs to keep it from moving around. Tacked one up already, came out pretty good. It's nice and tacked and I added some filler. Um, I couldn't really weld it the whole way because this bolt, I guess I could remove that bolt um, and maybe weld it, but honestly, I'd rather just pull it out and weld it from outside of the car because I just don't like welding near these massive explodey boy tanks. Um, I mean, they're sealed. There's no evap leaking, but still not my uh, cup of tea. Let's get this pulled down welder up and then we're going to space out this carrier bearing next which i'll show you why we have to do that and what's going on got that tab welded on there came out half decent not bad not bad that thing is on there um so let's put this exhaust back on and hopefully we don't have to take it off again until we test out the vis new viscous coupler i got which is going to be probably in another couple weeks you can also see i'm trying to like reorient these v-bands instead of having them hang down here where there's less ground clearance i'm trying to rotate them up a little bit that way but i gotta be weary of prop shaft clearance and other things but let's get this back half in i want to see how this uh this little tab fits so i'm going to be spacing this carrier out a little bit i'm going to put some spacers between here and the plate um plenty of clearance like up and around here for the carrier to be spaced out the issue is for some reason, this U-joint uh, right here actually grinds a little bit against this plate. And if I tug on the prop shaft, you can kind of hear it. Hear that? So on launch, when this prop moves around, this actually smacks and you're and it's super annoying. Probably not good for my U-joint. So I'm gonna take these two bolts out. I bought some spacers and we'll see how far we can space it out. I threw on some three quarter inch spacers. <laughs> But now, freaking hits up here. So, I think uh, we can put on the half inch spacers, which I have. I bought three quarter and half um, so that we can get it down. There's actually, maybe, there's a little thing right there. You see that? Maybe I can just smack that in with a hammer. Eh, well, let's try these half inchers first because there's so much room here now that, you know, it can, it can go down a bit. Let's try it out. Oh yeah, I got that prop spacing perfect. They used half inch spacers, you can see them there. And I used 30 millimeter bolts, but I gotta chop them down five or so millimeters because they're too long. I ordered longer ones because I thought I was gonna be able to use the three quarters, but I ordered half just in case. Anyway, so much room up there now, focus. So much room down here. And if we yank on it, I can shake the whole car without the prop hitting anything now. So, let's freaking launch this thing some more. On, exhaust is spaced out, and you can see how this is like solidly mounted now. So, this, wow, this is really solidly mounted. That's awesome. Um, since this subframe doesn't move relative to like the body or the exhaust, not, none of this is gonna be moving, so as long as it's mounted solid, nothing should be hitting. We rearranged our V-bands a little bit. You can see we got more V-band clearance now. You can see this one, we moved up here. So I moved up here. And of course we got this spaced out and nothing is hitting that prop now. And I can shake the entire car without any issues. So two hours and got a good amount of stuff done. You can see the exhaust kind of bows a little bit down, but I mean, like the clearance isn't that much worse than like this freaking rear subframe. I think the fitment's good. Anyway, I think I'm gonna lower it down, take it for a drive, and um, I wanna keep getting through 
this checklist. All right, so now I'm at 24 and a half in the front, 25 in the rear, and this actually fixed my camper. Oh my God, my camper was so bad when this car was lowered. It's a lot better, but it was literally like significantly more negative. As you lower these cars, the camera gets more and more negative. I'm really happy with this ride height. I think the wheel gap looks great. That's like fine, like the 17s with the taller tires, like it looks great from a distance. The front, I'm at 24 and a half. I might raise the front up and half an inch to 25 and I might raise this up to 25 and a half. I just wanna bring the car up. I'm sick of like this freaking low rider, like scraping on speed bumps, annoying this. And also it's gonna help save any contact. Not that there really is a lot of room, but any contact for those, uh, you know, outer CVs that I had to spend a lot of time designing. Anyway, we're chugging along. I bought some 6061 plates. So I think I'm gonna play around with welding aluminum because I need to weld a bung onto my intercooler pipe eventually. So I think I'm gonna break that out and uh, do some welding. Trying out some aluminum. Some 6061 plate with 42, 4032 filler, 90 amps, got about 120 hertz and 30 to 40 balance. 1 16th electrode, 3 16th filler. It's a lot better than stainless, way easier than stainless. It took about five minutes for me to figure out like breaking up the aluminum oxide. But other than that, I really like aluminum. Let's give her a rip. Other than it's freaking loud, but well, let's try it. Not bad, nope, too bad. Let's take a look. The reason why I'm learning 6061 while aluminum is because you should not have bought aluminum. Not too bad. Here's where I started, and then I got a little bit better. I gotta figure out this pitting. This pitting still kicking my butt. I think it's because I'm just being really lazy. But that guy, ooh, yeah, those are nice. Not too shabby. Just messing around. I wanted to pull a filter off the catch can and see how loaded it was. <laughs> she's, uh, she's pretty loaded. Oh, God. Oh, that's a good inch of oil. She's got a good cord in her. Um, I was wondering where all my oil was going. I have it set up so that one of the, the, the breather port that comes with the stock turbo drain actually is the oil drain back for this. Once the level gets high enough, it'll actually drain back down through the uh, stock oil turbo drain. But I had to switch um, like two of these lines, uh, switch the front and the rear because of some length issues with some changes I made to the PCV box. Anyway, point is this hose is actually really high and the oil in here actually can't make it up that hill and down and into the block. So that's why it's backing up. And I had barely like um, oil on the on the tip of the stick uh, when I let it sit overnight after everything dripped down. So it must not be a whole bunch of oil when it's running. I mean, there's still oil. I was still seeing good oil pressure, but I was seeing a bit of a drop. Um, and I only saw that on these last two pulls, so I knew something was getting low. We're gonna have to fix this. We're redoing the whole PCV box. I'm doing a whole video on this. I guess it's gonna be next. And I'm gonna do a whole video on that and Hopefully I'll show you guys my setup. It works pretty good. So I finally found that pesky freaking coolant leak. This hose on the bottom, I can feel it's wet. It got sliced on my new transmission mount. My transmission mount's really sharp. Um, I guess we're gonna have to replace the hose and bevel the edges and maybe tape it in that spot. But uh, I'm also using the wrong clamps here. Yes, I know. You should always use wicketer clamps, always, period. But, I mean, we'll redo that because we got to fix this. Fix this. And uh, I guess we'll have to drain all the coolant for this. But, eh, it's reusable. We'll put it back in.
I'll get those hoses ordered up and finally stop that leak.